Hello dear students, today we shall be taking up Rain on the Roof which has been taken from class 9 NCRT book Beehive. This poem Rain on the Roof was written by Coates Kinney. He was an American lawyer, politician, journalist and a poet. He was born in New York. He even worked for various newspapers and of all his verses the Rain on the Roof was the most popular. Now, before we start the poem, I have a question for my children, for my students. Yes, and the question is this. Do you like the rainy season? So, if you like it, what do you do when it rains steadily or heavily? I want you to write down all the adjectives that come to your mind when it rains. All right. And this, in fact, is the rainy season right now. Yes. It is raining in almost all parts of the country and we are going to take up this poem in this beautiful rainy season. The poem Rain on the Roof beautifully depicts the feelings of the poet while he is listening to the patter of soft rain on the roof of his cottage. Now let us recite the poem Rain on the Roof When the humid shadows hover over all the starry spheres and the melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears. What a bliss to press the pillow of a cotted chamber bed and lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead. Every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start and a thousand recollections weave their Earth heads into woof as I listen to the patter of the rain upon the roof. Now in memory comes my mother, as she used in years agone, to regard the darling dreamers here she left them till the dawn. Oh, I feel her fond look on me as I listen to this refrain, which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain. So that was the recitation of the poem and if you have been able to observe, uh, you will be able to uh, tell the rhyme scheme of the poem. So the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. All right. Uh, so this was the recitation and the rhyme scheme. Now go, let's go on to the explanation part. All right. Stanza 1. When the humid shadows hover over all the starry spheres and the melancholy darkness Gently weeps in rainy tears. What a bliss to press the pillow of a cotted chamber bed and lie listening to the patter of the soft rain overhead. Okay. So in stanza one, the poet depicts a rainy day wherein he is comfortably lying in his cottage and he listens to the soothing music that is created by the soft rain showers. So now let us uh, understand a few phrases and their meanings. Now, humid shadows. Humid shadows here mean it means rain bearing clouds. Starry spheres, it refers to the sky that is full of stars. Melancholy means sadness, bliss, happiness, and patter refers to the sound of the rain. Okay. So now let us take up the explanation, detailed explanation. The poet starts the poem by comparing the rain bearing clouds to humid shadows. Then he says, that these dark clouds cover the star-filled sky. So here the poet has portrayed a beautiful visual of swarming clouds over the night sky. Now if you will observe lines 3 and 4 in them, the poet says, And the melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears. Now please understand that darkness is not going to be sad or gloomy, but who, who can feel gloomy? Human beings, right? So the poet says that these are there are these are some human beings who feel sad, who feel gloomy because of the darkness. Uh, so the poet uh, further says that this gloomy darkness pours down in the line, gently weeps in rainy tears. Here the poet is presenting the sadness as weeping gently by shedding tears in the form of rain. I hope that was clear. Now observe lines 5 to 8 please. In, them, in these lines the poet expresses as to how he attains 
perfect happiness by lying in his comfortable bed and listening to the sound of soft falling showers so he is basically all curled up in his cozy bed and he listens to the pattering music of the rain falling softly on the roof of his little cottage now let us quickly take up the poetic devices also in stanza 1 now there is a metaphor here when the poet has compared the rain bearing clouds to human shadows alliteration alliteration uh, basically is what children uh, alliteration is the uh, basically use of the same letter or sound at the beginning of words that are close together for instance in this case it is starry spheres okay now onomatopoeia uh, these are onomatopoeic words uh, they basically contain sounds that are similar to the noises that they describe so here we are referring to this word as patter okay now we have transferred epithet in melancholy darkness as i just explained to you that basically it is not the darkness that is sad you know the, uh, so basically what is transferred epithet please understand epithet the word epithet means adjective so when an adjective usually used to describe one thing is transferred to another okay and uh, epithet as i just told you it is uh, it is it can be a word it can be a phrase and in this particular poem in this particular stanza which is the which is the epithet the epithet is melancholy okay that describes the main quality of someone or something so that is the epithet so in this case melancholy is the adjective is the epithet but this adjective is not used to describe uh, darkness but it is used to describe human beings okay so please remember that let us go on to the next poetic device that is personification now melancholy darkness gently weeps in rainy tears now here darkness ha has been personified darkness is portrayed as gloomy that shed tears just like us human beings in the form of rain so all these poetic devices metaphor alliteration onomatopoeia transfer epithet personification so there were five in all these poetic devices were used in stanza 1 now let us go on to stanza 2 every tinkle on the shingles has an echo in the heart and a thousand dreamy fancies into busy being start and a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof of the rain upon the roof now let us take up the word meanings first tinkle short light ringing sounds basically here it refers to the sound of the rain shingles shingles are wooden tiles on the roof echo is basically that repeated sound that one can hear woof that is the thread woven across the loom okay now in these lines the poet says that the pattering sound of the rain causes a resonance in his heart and his imagination and creativity is enhanced now how does this happen now remember in the beginning we said that rainy season for most of us you know is a happy season it rejuvenates it refreshes everyone so all those people who feel great who feel happy you know they uh, their creativity their imagination their visual uh, visualization power also gets enhanced so the same thing is happening here with the poet his imagination and creativity is enhanced different fanciful imaginations enter into the busy mind of the poet while listening to the pattering of the soft falling shower the poet recollects memories of his past these recollections are called the weavers by him and memories are compared to a fabric the poet says that he listens to the raindrops falling on the roof of his cottage and this sound reverberates in his heart and innumerable imaginary thoughts start to rise now this also brings back thousands and thousands of memories which were buried in his past he weaves each of these imaginations and memories and creates endless stories to lighten his heart as he continues to enjoy the patter of the falling rain okay now which are the poetic devices here tinkle again is an onomatopoeic sound busy being alliteration and personification that is um, a thousand recollections weave their air threads into woof 
So recollections are personified as they are shown to be weaving a cloth with threads of air. Now let us go on to stanza 3. Now in memory comes my mother as she used in years agone to regard the darling dreamers ere she left them till the dawn. Oh, I list to this refrain which is played upon the shingles by the patter of the rain. Now this continuous soothing sound of the rain makes the poet nostalgic and he thinks of his mother. He reminisces the affectionate look of his mother. He remembers how she used to sit by their side as he and his siblings, referred to as darling dreamers, lay asleep lost in dreams. You know, for a mother, children are always dear, darling for her, right? Even today, the poet says he can feel that fond, affectionate look of his mother while li listening to this refrain. Now, refrain refers to a line which is repeatedly used in a song or a poem. So, why is he referring to rain as a refrain here? Let us understand. So, the raindrops produce a distinct and continuous music by way of their pattern. This repetitive sound is called refrain by the poet. Okay. Now, uh, poetic devices that are used in this particular stanza are onomatopoeia and alliteration. And darling dreamers, I told you. Uh, that Darling Dreamers refers to the poet and his siblings. I hope all of you have understood the poem. Please remember that this particular poem originally has three, uh, not three, but five stanzas. Okay. Here in your syllabus, we have just three stanzas, but the original poem, if you will see, it has five stanzas. Okay. So now uh, let us quickly recapitulate what the poem was all about. Well, the poem portrays the emotions and memories that are aroused in the poet's heart by the soft falling showers on his tin roof. The poet has beautifully connected his present with his past through the memories that are revived by the rain. The rain has some magical effect on him as it triggers a thousand dreamy fancies in his mind and thousands of memories come alive. If you talk of the theme of the poem, well, it can be the magical effect of the, of the rain or the healing touch or healing power of the rain uh, because the rain uh, calms down the anxious minds. It rejuvenates. It has, it has that power to, it has the power to rejuvenate and refresh everyone and everything around it. Okay. I hope you understood the poem. Thank you for watching.